Okay, hello everyone. It's good to be here at the JM Beyond 2012 and meet you all, meet and actually give face to some of the Skype names, you know. That's how we call all these events. So anyway, I'm happy to present that what we did in Mongolia since 2007 to implement Joomla uh, content management system in Mongolia and how we managed to convert all these government websites to run uh, Joomla and what worked and what did not and mostly it worked pretty well so to give you guys a little idea what's the Mongolia is geez it's went all over the place Yes, Mongolia is, although it's sandwiched between Russia and China, we are 19th biggest country in the world, although there are not so many of us. So our capital city and only major city in Mongolia is Ulaanbaatar. That's where everyone is, everyone lives. And official language is Mongolian. Official script is Mongolian Cyrillic, which is quite similar to Russian alphabet and uh, our government is parliamentary republic although we have a president who is more or less symbolic but we, are, we have pretty good big uh, parliament our population is 2.7 uh, 2.7 and of all these people about over 1 million people live in the Ulaanbaatar city and the rest of the population lives in countryside scattered all over the place. And mobile phone penetration and internet penetration is fairly high compared to other developing countries. And recently we had uh, uh, actual, uh, the boom of uh, fiber optic connection providers in the city and majority of the internet connection in the city is now over, the, over fiber. And uh, we have top level domain is .mn and for government it's gov.mn and we have about 700 government websites coming up. So what uh, we started, uh, <coughs> the government of Mongolia initiated e, e uh, E-Mongolia uh, national program in 2005 and one of the projects that had planned was a website for every organization, email for every employee project to have uh, e every, single, uh, every single government organization in the Mongolia to have their own website and every single civil servant should have, a, have their email address. Uh, official email address and uh, uh, when uh, we were working in the US AID funded economic policy reform and competitiveness project uh, one of our portfolio was uh, <coughs> public uh, public and uh, private dialogue and uh, in term uh, within that uh, project we wanted to improve government <coughs> communication and public relations by improving their websites. And one of the problems, or many, we had uh, many problems for the government websites because due to uh, insufficient uh, budget, most of the, actually majority of the government organization would not have, the, wouldn't have dedicated webmaster position. They, most of them would be lucky to have a dedicated network administrator or IT 
IT manager. And also, most of them wouldn't have enough budget to hire professional web design firms to design uh, their website. And the third problem was, of those who managed to hire professional web design firm, uh, that as soon as the contract was finished, the website, when website was handed over to the government uh, organization, that organization themselves, no one knew how to maintain it, how to post news articles into, uh, into it, how to... Okay, it's asking for a password, Chris. So the website maintenance was very hectic in, in, among government organizations. So into half a year or one year after the web uh, project completion, most of the government websites would be fairly out of date. And uh, soon, uh, soon after, the, it would probably, you know, it uh, goes back and uh, uh, <clears throat> nobody maintained the website. And uh, of course, problem was that most of the content management systems and uh, most of the websites that were designed back then did not support Unicode. So uh, Mongolia, on top of the Russian, uh, Russian alphabet, had two extra letters. And when uh, most websites used uh, Windows 1251 encoding, then we had problems with those two letters. So we had to improvise it. Like English uh, letter V was used for one of them. And that completely ruined the searches because when people searched for such uh, you know, words uh, containing that exact letter, some people didn't know how to, uh, how to switch the letter so they, they wouldn't find the information that they were looking for. So there were many difficulties, especially from maintenance point of view, and uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, content-wise. So in 2007, in early 2007, uh, we started talking uh, about implementing this project with uh, information and communication technology uh, and post authority of Mongolia, which is a uh, policy implementation uh, uh, organization of the government of Mongolia regarding this uh, website project for governments. And we had several choices for content management system. Of, first of all, it was very obvious and no-brainer to, to say that we wanted to have the latest uh, uh, possible content management system which was database driven and based on uh, web scripting languages such as PHP or something like that. So once we went over the websites, we had, of course, Drupal was around, WordPress was around, and Joomla was around. And technically, all these content management systems were pretty uh, uh, com uh, competent to, to develop a website. But uh, our final criteria for the government website was user friendliness. And once we checked all the content management systems, we, we, uh, we had, it was not so hard for us to choose Joomla content management systems for two reasons. Because, uh, first, of course, the user, uh, user the administration, administration panel the news uh, articles updating was really easy and simple to understand in Joomla. And second, uh, we had, uh, had a way to translate Joomla into Mongolian because majority of the network administrators who were working in government organizations didn't know English. So we had to have a, a content management system which had Mongolian administration, uh, admin panel. So, so uh, at that point, we had Joomla 
seven or eight around, and which did not support Unicode, which didn't have language pack or anything. So we just went over the uh, the core Joomla core and found out that if we did uh, slight modifications in the core Joomla core as well as the MySQL database and then created language packs and created the language strings and everything, it was possible. So we went on to do it by hiring two programmers and uh, uh, we, we managed the project from the US AID side and it took us about two months to release first beta version of the Joomla International Edition with, uh, uh, with Mongolian language pack for the first time, for both for admin part and as well as the front end. So we dubbed the Joomla International Edition for many reasons. Since it allowed, UT, it, since it uh, supported Unicode UTF-8, and also uh, uh, the more languages, more other languages could be added to it. So it was literally Joomla 1.0 that made international. So we dubbed it Joomla International, and uh, uh, <coughs> we released it. But at that time, Joomla leadership did not quite like it because they always said, oh, it's, it doesn't support Unicode, it doesn't support Unicode. But within two months, by hacking the core, we managed it. So we still distributed uh, it as a fork of 1.0 at that moment. And uh, we did, we did uh, quite good buzz around it. So, and also, we designed a custom template which uh, had many good features of uh, actually modern templates to, to uh, go along with uh, this uh, Joomla International Edition for government organizations. Uh, so, so that's how we started our Joomla endeavor in 2007. And uh, I think Joomla 1.5 was released in January of 2008. And within two months, we had the front-end translation. And after uh, long work and lots of things, in September 2009, we had complete Joomla language package and installation of 1.5. And since 1.5 natively supported uh, Unicode and it had separate language uh, packs, we didn't have to tinker with the Joomla core anymore. So we just simply went along with Joomla. We uh, set up our own Joomla user group, Joomla community. And with the launch of Joomla 1.5, then we, Mongolian Joomla community, became more official and more, uh, had more frequent communication uh, with the Joomla leadership as well as the Joomla uh, community teams. And uh, uh, of course, we kept doing the Joomla 1.7, 2.5 translations and keeping up the, uh, our Joomla community. So, <clears throat> okay. So some statistics. The most, uh, according to most uh, recent statistics, uh, we have about 40,000 websites in Mongolia that are using uh, various versions of Joomla. Even we still have some, some Mongolian websites that are still using Joomla International Edition. And the majority of the website, almost like 90%, is still using 1.5, and slow migration to 1.7 and 2.5 is being made recently. And <clears throat> uh, in Mongolia, there are about 700 individual government organizations at various administrative uh, levels, 
and uh, uh, there's 361 of them uh, using a uh, Joomla. And the majority of these websites uh, are hosted at the National Data Center, which is a state-of-the-art new data center uh, uh, built by Koreans about four years ago. So it is affordable Joomla hosting uh, by the National Data Center. And uh, one of the things that we did was the quarterly Joomla training with uh, quarterly Joomla training specifically for government IT administrators and network administrators. Uh, it is usually two-day training uh, from about first day would be Joomla, normal Joomla maintenance and administration. Second day would be how to design a Joomla website and template modifications, CSS, and what is the components, how to upgrade the website, something like that. It was provided completely free of charge to government administrators to promote them and encourage them to keep using or design the websites uh, on Joomla. And of all these 300 or so websites, eight websites were specifically designed uh, by us. And uh, we also provided two training sessions, in, one in Ulaanbaatar, one in the countryside, for all the tax office administrators around the country, where there, there are about 400 tax offices around the Mongolia. And then we invited them to, to Joomla training sessions, and as well as uh, occasional Joomla lectures to stu uh, university students. And uh, the Joomla International uh, Edition was, has been used on about 74,000 websites around the world. About, uh, it, it's, uh, this number is taken about two years ago. And after we released uh, the Joomla International Edition, Thailand, uh, uh, Thailand community was the first to adopt it and use it. I think many of you know Crit from uh, Thailand. He was the one who helped us to actually hack the core and integrate Unicode, and he translated it into Thailand and Thai language and used it there. And, uh, France was next one, and then Spanish, and then many other uh, communities followed and used it. Actually, anyone here actually ever heard of Joomla International Edition and tried to use it? No, I heard of it, I checked it out, but I never really used it. Uh -huh. Well, at that time, it was quite a good solution when we had no Unicode. <laughs> I, I Yeah. So, what exactly we did in the scope of Joomla project in Mongolia? First, we provided to the community the localization of Joomla. And many people say that, uh, many people say, you guys are implement, you guys keep saying that you implement Joomla in Mongolia, implement in Joomla. It's actually, you can just simply download Joomla of the Joomla website, translate those files and post it on the website. What else needs to be done? You, are, you guys are making so much fuss about it. What's the big deal about it and so on? But nobody realizes that a localizing open source solution in a country, in a community is not, uh, a lot more than just simply translating a few lines and putting it online because it's about enabling your community to invent solutions. Because the community is usually out there and they wouldn't know all, all the solutions and how it's exactly done. You have to lead by, the, uh, lead by enabling those people to, to do it all by themselves. So what we really did was to enable Joomla community to grow on itself. So, second one was the uh, we <coughs> want to have more Joomla websites, and uh, in any 
in any country, in Mongolia especially, the IT projects uh, look quite successful when government is very active on it. Uh, computers, internet, or any new software and solution. Whenever it's, done, whenever it's done within the government organizations, people say, oh, if government is using this, maybe you should try it out, or something like that. When private sector uses some solutions, it's usually kept very it, uh, low, low profile, and national TV and newspapers wouldn't usually cover it. And since we did, through the government organization, when we did the Joomla Day or training sessions or some press conference, you know, our government counterparts made sure that local TV crews came over and we were in the evening news. We were on the cover of some daily newspapers and uh, the national news portal, some websites published our news. So because of our government cooperation, we, we had very good news coverage. So that made, uh, made it enabled us to disseminate our project information in the right way, rather than uh, news reaching people from mouth to mouth on the way being distorted a little bit. And uh, also by, train, uh, by training government administrators, uh, we uh, developed a pretty good basic set of basic uh, Joomla web designers. And because the government IT administrators were depending on pretty low government salary, in order to make additional income after had, they had designed their own websites, uh, they started actually designing websites for private companies in their free time so that they had extra income. So, so all of a sudden, we had like 60 or 70 uh, Joomla-specific Joomla web designers. So, and that's actually... <coughs> uh, instigated that more people should learn Joomla. And then our second target was all those IT university students. And because students had no income at all, and Joomla, uh, Joomla offered them, a, a required them least time, least possible time to learn, to master it, and start basic designing. Joomla allowed it compared, compared to WordPress or Drupal. Never mind Drupal. I even tried Drupal, tried to design a website on Drupal, and after one month I gave up and just went back to Joomla. <laughs> so, so among, uh, now these days, the IT students of Mongolian, Mongolian uh, uh, universities are very good at designing basic Joomla websites for any companies, and they usually do it for a couple hundred bucks and end up sometimes so-so and mostly okay websites. So that is also uh, enabling lots of uh, Joomla <coughs> implementations in Mongolia. And <coughs> Also, through our community website, the Nomads 2.0, as I dubbed it, N20, is our community website to provide linkages to latest Joomla packages. Also, we offer the free Joomla tutorials in Mongolian language, step by step, foolproof. As some person said, you know, just go on and read that news uh, that tutorial on n20.mn, you know, unless you are completely stupid, you're going to just simply get it, you know. So we try to provide foolproof, this easy tutorials free of charge on our website and ask people to just to go on there and follow it and then they will pick it up pretty soon. And uh, <clears throat> also we designed the websites for the tax authority of Mongolia, 
and the Prime Minister's Office of Mongolia, and uh, the the special specialized inspection office of authority agency of Mongolia, which is kind of quarantine control, and the customs office, and uh, for Ministry of Transportation and Road and Construction, and Ministry of Agriculture, and uh, and the ICT authority. So we developed uh, websites personally for these key agencies to make to lead by example that how Joomla websites can be completely quite complex yet look pretty clean and very easy for their administrators to maintain it on daily basis and provide people uh, uh, new information. So uh, after that, lots of, uh, lots of other government organizations simply followed and majority of them decided to design their websites on their own without spending anything at all. Because from the USAID project, when they were designing their website on, by themselves, we, whenever they had problem, or whenever they had some difficulty figuring out some solutions, some components, some models, we just provided all the advice free of charge. We just went there and said, okay, you can just go on and use that component, that model, that plugin, this, or you tweak it this way, so it does that. Or somebody, when they couldn't figure out how to make this CSS modifications and make to look things nicer or something, we just did it for them because it took us about an hour a day or something. And we were pretty good covered by the American project which was uh, one of our adventures. And <clears throat> also, the last uh, important thing we did was to bust the myth that Joomla, wa uh, Joomla security was very bad. Because uh, many uh, web design firms that had built their own content management systems started spreading the rumor or so, saying, oh, Joomla, yeah, yeah, that, you, you, you should forget about it because Joomla security is so bad, you will be hacked in one week or so and saying uh, so many things when they had not done complete Joomla security checklist or even basic Joomla security. And uh, there were many problems also that we faced uh, in our Joomla implementations. First, uh, uh, most of the people, as soon as the web design process was finished, and uh, when we had about uh, every two months or every three months, or sometimes there were nightly security, Joomla security release, people would not update. They didn't know how to update it. Or sometimes they just didn't care about it. And second, uh, people didn't know how to properly use FTP layer because of the file and folder permissions. So to make, to make the website work and to make the uploads and installations work, most IT administrators had a pretty brilliant idea of making their folders 777. All right. It works, so they would forget about it. And thanks. In one week or two, you know, they would be hacked so easily. So they would go on and say, oh, my website got hacked. It was on Joomla. Joomla security should be so bad. Something like that, when they didn't realize they were just making a simple security uh, mistakes. No matter what a content management system they had used, they were prone to, ha to be hacked anyway. So, but they were, uh, you know, it was easy to, you know, okay, I used Joomla, so it was bad. Something like that. So we, uh, then, uh, then we focused on providing all these security related uh, tutorials and information and kept sending it around. As soon as there is a new Joomla release, we, we had a long list uh, of 
um, Yahoo Messenger contacts of contacts of all government web administrators or whoever was in charge web and ask them, okay, update your website. We would send a notice. We would post it on our website saying, okay, there is a new release. Just you better, uh, <coughs> you better update it. And of course, we provided the Joomla security checklist that what exactly ha has to be done on, on the Apache server, what PHP configuration is recommended for, uh, for, for security, and what kind of normal practices they should be following in order to uh, strengthen their security. So all these efforts helped, and uh, since 2007, uh, and of all these 361 websites, we only had one security breach, and which was, uh, which was Ministry of Health website got hacked because they just simply didn't upgrade to the latest Joomla 1.5 version. They had some long ago and had the password password reset, and then someone just decided to screw it up. So, <clears throat> so security audits and consultation was pretty important for success of our project. Okay. So where's my mouse? Okay. So we, uh, in the process of our, our project, we realized there are a few important success factors that any country or any developing country should be really care about. One is to have very strong government counterpart or a champion or person who's really passionate about making this project successful in an organization who is, who is high enough in the national administrative hierarchy to, to lead the project and to force the project all the way down uh, and around. And unfortunately, we had the ICT authority of Mongolia promoting this project and uh, we had a pretty good result through this cooperation. And uh, <clears throat> for strive for sustainability, that is, uh, this is something that we did not really manage well, but the community sustainability, sustainability of the project in the long run uh, is pretty important. The project was successful in the first three years from 2010 until 2010 because we had USAID project funding. And that's why we did not seek so many sponsorships or another other sources of funding, uh, maybe from project or from the government or something. So as soon as the USAID project finished in 2010, we just all of a sudden we didn't have any funding for our events, or if we wanted to do anything, we just didn't have any funding. And in Mongolia, most of the people and most of the businesses uh, wouldn't really keen on sponsoring these social events because Mongolian economy is still very much developing and uh, it's not so stable at the moment. So we would have uh, finding uh, sponsors for our events. That's why uh, after two th uh, starting from 2010, we did not manage to organize many events or any, or any training at all. So sustainability of the project all the way along is very important. And development of the web skills is also very important. Although through our training sessions, we have many, many web designers who are all at the intermediate levels and we don't have any advanced web designers. That's because the education 
and IT in Mongolia, web designing in Mongolia is still new, and very skilled web designers are all hired by private companies, and most of them would not choose to develop specifically for uh, Joomla. And to that respect, in Mongolia, unfortunately, we don't have, uh, we don't have actually, almost, we, we don't have any Joomla developers. So we don't have any Mongolian Joomla extension. We had only, we had one Mongolian model, and we developed that government template a long time ago, and that was it. And after that, Mongolian web designers would simply use the components, Joomla components developed by any other countries, and wouldn't develop many templates, or they would rather prefer, they would prefer to use templates from those template clubs like Rocket Dam, Joomla Art, or something, and wouldn't really try to develop on their own. And it's simply because the Joomla development, Joomla template development skill is not reaching into Mongolia. And lots of information, development related information is in English, and majority of the students you know, don't have good English skills. So that's one of the problems. And the consistent and open communication from all the way from OSM and Joomla leadership team to the local communities is also not so straightforward, especially to the Asian countries. And being within the OSM board, I, I still feel that we are actually not doing enough also to, to, to some respect. And, uh, and also, because uh, I was only person from the very beginning handling all these all these communications, uh, one of maybe uh, one of uh, our failures, or maybe it's just natural that we don't have so many Joomla community leaders in Mongolia. So I'm pretty active in in Mongolia, but literally there are not so many guys, not so committed guys who would be who would be willing to volunteer their own time to really drive this project going on and on. So that's uh, also one of the important factors. Yes? I think there are two factors. First is, of course, the language, uh, language barrier. Although the English in Mongolia is improving quite, quite good, but uh, second biggest uh, barrier is probably a cultural barrier because Mongolians are usually quite nomadic and uh, they are very, pretty much on their own and not so collaborative people and not so open and although Mongolians are very kind and respective people but to really openly communicate with other people and people from other nations Mongolians are pretty hard we are very closed down people and uh, I was uh, I'm working in United Nations since year 2000, and then next seven years until 2010, I worked in USAID project. So for 10 years, I worked with so many people from many other countries, which probably helped me to open up and freely communicate with literally anyone. So otherwise, other Mongolian people, especially people in IT, uh, not so opened up, no, not so f free to communicate. I think that cultural barrier is the biggest one, I think. Yeah. So, lessons learned. 
what we should be doing, what we should be paying a lot more attention is community, community building. And we, we should work, uh, work uh, very hard to build a strong and sustainable community because having one or two strong leaders and no one else is not helping within the community. Uh, we can I can deliver Mongolian packages and Joomla information, but then it's, you know, effort and time spent is very limited because there is only one or two person working in a country is not enough usually. And uh, the building, the identifying community leaders and build leadership team is very important within any country. And uh, educating the local developer community is very important. As I, uh, as I said in the previous slide, that uh, developing, having a, a, a strong uh, development community and having a new uh, skill is uh, very important. That's why I've been discussing and I'm pretty happy that our German community guys are willing to help Mongolian community by providing development related uh, courses personally in Mongolia. So uh, I think I'm looking forward to lots of good events to, uh, in Mongolia. And uh, more frequent events and increased the funding from the Joomla leadership to developing country uh, events and having more Joomla training would help in, uh, in Mongolia because uh, the Joomla Shack or open source, uh, what's, what is the Steve Burgess OS training, OS training right? Uh, those trainers, they have uh, pretty good information, but price tag of more than 100 bucks or so is already too expensive uh, in, a, in a developing country like Mongolia. And when we do a training, a one day training, you know, like when we say maybe $20 a day, people would come. When we say $50, people would think. When we say $100 a day, you know, people run away. So, so the living standard and people's income, the economic status is also limiting also uh, all these trainings and events. So it's pretty hard task ahead of us. So that's pretty much it. And uh, our community, we have several administrators, but only two or three of us are very active uh, in the community and provide and do most of the plumbing job. And then we provide Joomla tutorials, packages. We also maintain the Joomla user group and the IT dictionary because the IT dictionary, consistency of the IT, uh, IT related terms and definitions is very, really hard in Mongolia because Mongolian language is, language is not so techy and it was really hard to translate some words into Mongolian and yet people to have understanding it. And sometimes one English word would translate into four or five words in Mongolian. Otherwise, we could not clearly define it. And one, once we translate one word into two or three words, it wouldn't fit on the template. It wouldn't fit in the box that was designed in the admin panel. You know, things would st start breaking off. So that was one of the hardest things. And then also, just for references, we translated the GPL license into Mongolian and then asked people, okay, take a close look at it and honor what it is really about. And then also we, uh, since last year, we are, we are doing the Mozilla and WordPress localization uh, as well to give people more options. So, so this is it. Sure. Yeah. Uh, you answered most of the questions that I was planning as you went along. 
Okay. In, um, Go on. Apart from apart from Joomla as an open source solution, has Mongolian government adopted any other open source things like LibreOffice or things like that, or is it just Joomla that's <coughs> the Open Office? 3.0 was localized. Drupal is used on several websites. WordPress is used on several websites. And that's about it. Okay. Yeah. I mean, is, is OpenOffice used widely? No, not okay. really. Okay. Yeah. So it's all Microsoft. And piracy, software piracy, actually even Joomla piracy is yeah. quite high in Mongolia. Because most people, for most people, uh, buying a Joomla template would, uh, is still, still pretty expensive. So, and also, same for the components. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>